Um, I mean, a lot of the damage, of course, has been done to confidence, and certainly we survey, uh, yeah. we the Chamber of Commerce survey our members on a regular basis on, on business confidence and, and business performance. Yeah. And one of the things that we get repeatedly back to yeah. us is the way that uh, the lack of confidence that's been caused by adverse media reports. How would you wish to respond to them? What I would say is that what has driven us into a recession is a, the development of an enormous bubble in the banking industry. Uh, and this is a bubble that was broadly global that has been pricked. And a colossal amount of credit has been withdrawn from our economy and the British economy. The Treasury, for example, has calculated that the collapse of the Icelandic banks, the closure of these wholesale markets that I've been talking about, the fact that American banks have basically retreated home to a large extent means that something like 50% less credit is available in the UK as a result of, as I say, uh, the problems in the financial system than was the case uh, before the summer of 2007. That is what has driven us into recession. If you look at the measures that across the world um, governments have taken to prop up the banking system, $15 trillion of taxpayers' money from Japan to South Korea to Australia to the Eurozone to the US and of course the UK has been provided. Taxpayers' money, $15 trillion has been provided in the form of loans, guarantees and investments to keep the, the banking system afloat. And that's just the banking system. That is not the massive increases in public spending that are going on. Okay. What that tells you is that this is not a crisis of confidence. This is a recession caused by a massive overhang of debt, uh, a, a bulge of lending, and a lot of that lending that has gone bad, and that in a sense, I think the media has done a responsible job of explaining what is a profoundly worrying economic reality. Uh, and I, you know, so yes, I accept that we should not be gloomy in the sense of painting a negative picture uh, rather than simply presenting the facts, but the facts are profoundly alarming. Um, and I think people slightly confuse, what I've slightly felt, this is slightly rambling here, but I've slightly felt that people just didn't want to hear the message. The message is, I mean, I've stuck to facts, that's all I've done, I haven't said, uh, anything other than this is what is happening, these are the, I mean, it's what I deal in, it's what I've always dealt in, is numbers. And what I've done is I've presented the numbers to people about what's been happening in terms of, in particular, lending and the problems in the banking system. And, you know, th those numbers are profoundly worrying and profoundly shocking. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, BBC or, in general, the media can be accused of, in a sense, causing, you know, making. The, you know, the downturn worse because what's driving this downturn is this shortage of credit. Sorry, it's a very rambling no, way of getting to okay. the point. In, in a past life, you James, wrote a... I'm sorry. One sorry, very what, quick last one. Last one. Yeah, last in, one. In a past life, you wrote a very excellent biography um, of Gordon Brown when he was Chancellor. Yeah. If you were to write the epilogue, what would you write? Well, funny enough, I've, I've um, written another book since then, yes. <laughs> which does actually give you the answer. Uh, uh, which but it's not quite the epilogue to that particular... No, but it, 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 does, but it, does, no, no, it does, but it does give you the answer because it's about the big mistake he made. I mean, this book, Who Runs Britain, tells you, I think, quite a lot about a miscalculation that the Treasury um, and the Bank of England and the FSA and Gordon Brown made, which is that they saw this boom in the city and actually, to a certain extent, they took bride, pride in it because what they thought they saw was a great British success story. Here we were, a country which had had very few great world-leading industries, and the city looked like, you know, it was like winning the Olympics. At last, we won all those gold medals. What they didn't do was look closely enough at the risks that were being taken at the city, in the city. They loved all the tax revenues that were coming in from there, uh, and they just took pride, which is perfectly understandable, that it seemed to be doing well. But if you are a regulator, if you are a politician, you have to look under the bonnet. You have to see whether the un engine, you know, it sounds great, but is it actually, you know, overheating? And it was overheating, and they should have checked it out.